In this video, I'm going to show you how to build alerts for your applications. We'll specifically look at the logic and variables that are available to use with applications and components. To begin, open Settings, Manage Alerts in your Orion Web Console, click Add New Alert to kick off the Alert Wizard. For the purpose of this alert, I'm going to assume I've got a few items already defined. I'm monitoring an SQL Server application and have created a custom property on my nodes to help to define which department owns which servers. Let's take a look at the different ways I can alert on this SQL application. On your Properties page, it's a good practice to name your alert descriptively to make it easy to find again. As time goes on, you'll find yourself creating a lot of alerts to handle different situations and a good naming convention. And use of the severity of alert setting can help to locate the alerts. To alert on applications, you'll want to set the I want to alert on setting to application. Once this is selected, the alert trigger condition options will change to reflect the type of object you've chosen to monitor. The simplest application alert you can set up is alert me when an application goes down. If any component of an application fails, its parent application will be set to down. This will be picked up by the alert logic and any actions you defined will be triggered. However, this is overly simplistic. If any component anywhere in your monitored environment fails, that trigger action would be taken. It's better practice to set up your alert for the specific applications and servers that you need your alerts from to avoid alert spam. Receiving too many alerts is just as bad as receiving none as it makes it too difficult to root out the high priority items. Use the trigger condition to define out exactly what you want this alert to match. Click Browse All Fields to choose more application details that you could use. For example, the application status, the application name, its description, or the last time it was up. You can adjust the Application dropdown to Node to also use node-based variables to filter your alert. For this scenario, I'm going to alert when applications with the SQL server name have an application status of Down, and the node-based custom property of Department is set to R&D. This lets me closely define that I only want this alert to go out when one of my R&D SQL Server applications run into trouble. I'm skipping over some of the settings here as we've covered these in the Trigger Condition Logic, Reset Condition Logic, and Scheduling Alerts videos. Let's take a look at the Trigger Action options open to applications. Clicking on Add Action lets me choose exactly what this alert should do when it triggers. There's a lot of potential actions you can take, from sending emails and pages through to executing scripts to make automated remedy actions. Take a look at the Alert Actions video for more details on these. I'm choosing to send an email. You'll need to make sure the recipient and SMTP server have been correctly defined here. You'll notice the message itself has a lot of variables already defined for you. These are filled in at runtime with variables about the particular server and application that triggered the alert. If you need additional details in your email, click on Insert Variable. Use the drop-down menu to swap to application-specific variables, and you'll find a wealth of information that can be provided automatically within your email notification. From statistics and status of the node or application and how you're polling it, to any custom properties defined on either application or the node. To add a variable, choose the one you want, star it to find it easily again, and then click Insert Variable. You can add multiple variables at the same time. All variables available for applications on the trigger actions will also be available for you to use on any reset actions. Now let's consider a problematic situation. In my SQL Server application, I've defined a custom script that the R&D team want me to run against the SQL Server to monitor its statistics. However, it doesn't always succeed, meaning it's generating a lot of false positive status down alerts and needless wake-up calls. For this scenario, I'm going to alert on the component object instead. When you set up an alert on an application component, each component is considered its own separate object. 
You'll receive an alert as each component goes down. However, it will mean you can choose to set up the alert to not occur for specific components. I'm going to set this up to alert me when any component in the SQL Server application goes down, except for that problematic script one. All of the variables for the trigger and reset actions for applications will still be available to me. Another good reason to alert on components would be to build in automated responses for continuously failing components. For example, if a service keeps stopping unexpectedly, you could build a component alert for that service with an action to restart that service, and an additional event to then email you if the service is still failing. Overall, it's generally best to alert on applications and not components to reduce alert noise and make sure the emails you're receiving are the important ones.